Hi there. So now let's move to the meshing part. So we have these two geometries. Okay, it's exactly the same, but one is a modular space plane, so the meshing will be pretty much the same. So I'm going to create using two methods, one called sweep mesh and the other a full instructor mesh. Okay, so my guess the full instructor like in 2D is the easiest one. Uh, something that I'm going to, to throw in parameters here just to generate the, the, the mesh is you want to see the, the, the parameters for each of these case. Just go back to, to the workbench and you open there and you will see the, the parameters. So I will use some other parameter just to show you how to do it. But then if so you want to see the precision now, the exact value that I used to get a Y plus of one or how to re the exact value to have a fine mesh in this edge, whatever. You have everything here, okay? So just feel, revisit this case and open, okay? So let me close there. So let me create in this one, let me push this one, drag and drop, so mesh, put it here. Let me create the mesh, save every now and then and double click. Okay, so let's create the first the first mesh, okay? Okay, so it's opening uh, the, the mesh tool. It will import the mesh and we have it there, okay? So remember, one solid, so as you go back to, to, to to the geometry, you will see that we have only one solid. So as you click here, remember, choose your predefined values, CFD fluent, see the triangle is telling you the maximum dimension. So probably we can put here zero, zero 0.5. You have it there and you can just press generate and you can get an initial mesh, okay? So it will be not a very nice one, okay? But we have one initial mesh and now we can adjust the parameters, okay? So as you see this mesh, see that there is something that I want. To, this is a sweepable mesh. So what what it's doing here is you are meshing this face and then you sweep this face all over your your domain, your path. Okay. So this is is a very robust method. It's very fast and can generate really good uh, high quality mesh. However, have in mind that having sweepable bodies is not possible all the time. So in this case, a straight pipe. It's possible, probably you add an elbow or a bend, also it's possible, but then very complicated geometries is not, it's not, it's not possible, or if it is possible, it would require too many operations, okay? So these are things that you, you, you need to wait at the, at the time of choosing a method, but let's do it here. In, insert here, method, select the body, okay, we're in 3D, and now here you can select your methods, okay? So in our case, it's, this sweep and see that it's asking you here algorithm program the program will control everything okay so easy geometries it will do it like in this one but you can go okay sorry uh you can go here source target selection okay so as you put it automatically it will find the source face and the target face the other string okay so in this case is easy, but usually you need to do manual source or target. Okay, so you manually select, this is your source face, apply, and then select your target face, apply. So you select, so kind of you are doing the extrusion from here to here. Then select the method that you want to use to create the elements. So you can use quad three, all three, all quad, it's up to you. So let's select all three and see here, that number of the divisions. Okay, so here you choose, let me put 10 and let me generate. And you have it here, 10 divisions, you see, and you have the triangular mesh here. As you see, very easy, super fast, by the way, okay? So let's say that is you want to do 100 divisions, go there, 100 divisions, and you have it there. So now at this point, Remember the, at this point, remember the lectures about the lens scales and everything. So uh, we mentioned that this direction is also important. So if you have, you can compute your lens scales, integral lens scale, you will see that cells like this, it, 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 it is too large. So you are going, not going to resolve well to stress. So you're going to get small errors there. So if you recall the case presentation that it was a small shift between the theoretical uh, Y plus, U plus curve and the, and the numerical one. It's just due to this that 
in 3D things are more expensive. So if you want to to have a very good resolution, you you are going to put you need to put like two thousand cells. But then when you look at the cell count, uh, those are a lot of cells that you're putting there. So see that there, something like this will give you a good resolution, but your statistics start. It's still something that you can afford, but then remember that we need to have finer cells here. Okay, so you recall the, to the image, it was super fine, even in the core. So here we need to add refinement. So things become very expensive. So let's control this one. Let me put for the time being 200 there. Okay, and see that you have this type of mesh here. If you want to have quads, just change it here. Okay, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, okay, so in my case, I prefer to have three, like three better. And now what we need to add to do is to add refinement. So you go here, insert sizing in this phase, and now choose the element size. Will be zero one, let's say. You have it there, it's still a little bit large. Let's put 0 0.5. Okay, it's doing, and see that you have it. So this is much, much prettier, as you see. And probably you can put, I don't know, 0 0.25, will be even better. Okay, so you see that it started to become a little bit slower because needs to generate more cells and so more expensive and you have it there so this is a very nice mesh and if you want you can give it a try let's say how, how it looks like with with all quads and also you can add the face that this auction now the face mesh in here and but here you need a okay, but one you can play around so let's see how it looks like with quads So quads will use less cells, okay? But honestly, I think triangles resolve better. So see that you have this strange pat pattern there. That, so you can hear in reality for those who knows what, what are structure meshes now, uh, what we need to do is an all, all type topology, okay? So an all type topology would be something like, let me show you drawing here in my screen. Well, we, you need to split the face, something like this. So you see that this is the sense that when you do structural meshes or it's time consuming. So you need to do this topological manipulation. You split the mesh like this and see that now here you add your mesh like this, like this in this phase, something like this. Okay, here like this, here like this. Okay, and then here it will be these lines, okay. So you see that it will be something much, much better. And then well here you add the ended radial direction like this but the thing that you need to do this topological ma manipulation which is not a straight forward it's not it's not it's not easy okay but you do that using the face the, the face nation okay but honestly i don't recommend you to go for that approach so stick here in my case it will stick with the old triangle okay so as you see at this point we are done okay we have pretty much uh a good mesh okay However, we're missing one feature, very important feature. So let's wait into having this. Voila, very nice. So see, this is this is relatively nice. So the feature that we're missing here is the boundary layer meshing, okay? So to add the boundary layer meshing in this case, what we need to do, so remember that as we are using this auction sweep, we're sweeping the face. So we need to apply those auctions in the face. So we need to select the face, the scope will be the face and then the edge will be the one that we're going to use to grow the, the boundary layer. So to do that, go here, insert, and you have here inflation. Select the face. Okay, no, it's, no, it's the body, so it's sculpting the body here, and now the edge. Okay, no, it's the opposite now. It's sculpting the face, and now you select the edge and you have it there. So just to make things faster, let me reduce this one to 0 0.01, okay? Just to get it working fast. Okay, face size is this one. 
Uh, okay, I chose the wrong one, 0 0.01 here. Okay, and see that you have your face grow. So here it's up to you to choose the method. So for instance, you know your target white plus is one and you're talking about a range of 100,000. Okay, we already did it the previous one. It would be something about, about six now, about something like this, that it will give you that value. So if you do, if you do this, See that it's super fine towards the, the wall. Okay, so, okay. Let me, let me use that. Okay, it's super fine towards the wall, so it probably it's better to increase this. Okay, so at this point, as you see, you have absolute control. Okay, so we know our integral scales, how, how, how to compute that, and from that, you can get an estimate and the cell size and everything. Okay, so this is much better. This is much nicer. See that you have this. And um, for instance, let me add another sizing. And I want to add an edge sizing here. So in this edge, apply, I want to have cells about 0 0.05. And see that you have there the reference. So I want to in actually 0 0.2 generate so just in this edge it will put 0 0.002 and then will grow and then here it will grow to this size that you put here in the face sizing so it is a little bit slower it's putting much much cells in your domain and this is what we have a much nicer mesh okay so However, here you see that this transition is not very nice. So what you can do now probably can reduce this one, but also we can increase, decrease this one to 0 0.5 to have a better transition. And this is how you do meshes, okay? But what is important is so always to have this initial reference about the, the initial estimate of lens scale. So the Y plus we have seen is, as I mentioned at the beginning, extremely important quantity. So always compute it. And from that, you're going to have an idea of the resolution, the mesh re resolution as the wall. Remember that you need to resolve curvature, okay? So this is why I put in this value to resolve well the curvature. And then maybe you can get from the integral lens scale, those initial estimate, an idea of the, of the, of the vortices, whatever you, you're going to have this. So you need to put in enough cells here also to resolve the velocity profile. So if you put here 10 cells across the pipe, probably it's not enough because you are going to resolve that. So here there are like 20. Okay. So. It's a little bit experience, but see that knowing this theory, it can help you a lot to get those estimates very fast and get a, a relatively good mesh fast. Okay, so at this point, I can say that this is a good mesh. Can, we can take it for granted. However, it remains open this issue that here, probably this distance is too large. So maybe you are not going to resolve while shear stresses, you are going to have some, some error. So here again, you, you will need to increase it that one. So as you go, for instance, let's say 1000, that will be a good value for this pipe. And it will be slow, slower than the previous one. Okay, so let's wait. Okay, so see that it took a while and see that it has much, much better resolution here. Okay, your very nice mesh. But as you go here and the cell count, see that now you, you, your cell went to almost 5 million cells, which this is a typical value, by the way, for, for 3D simulations, okay, in the order of 5 to 10 million cells, okay. In our case, if you are using academic license like and using here, you are going to have a problem. So you might be able to generate the mesh, but when you open Fluent, Fluent will tell you that uh, you can run the, the simulation with the cell. So you need to play around. But you have seen here now the, the workflow, okay? Relatively straightforward, okay? This is the, the suite method. So this point now we go here, we close. 
it will save everything so again this is a large mesh so when it's closing it will take a time okay but it's saving the mesh so it's a large file so depending on your computer whatever it can take a while so in my case it will take a while even if i have a good computer so what close and safe see that now you save it and now you have your mesh here so see that that mesh is 157 megabytes okay even if it's a small one and it's not it's, it's not a strange to see stuff here going the order of two three five gigabytes okay so don't be surprised it's large, large numbers here mesh sizes file sizes with large measures okay so this is what what we have and then to move to fluent remember that then you go like this okay and then lighting update and it will convert this into fluent format so i will do the conversion okay so we're done with this video tutorial okay the next one we're going to do pretty much the same okay but in the second geometry which is the same as this one but instead of using the, the suit method we're going to use the full instructor method which is much easier okay so the suit method is already easy as you see the instructor is much easier then you want to have the full uh, structure that one is too complicated i don't i'm not going to 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 show you that i'm not going to waste time there the measures are, are beautiful and nice but it is too complicated so i don't want to waste time there showing that so stick with these two methods the suite or the full in instructor remember that in the suite method not every geometry is sweepable okay so you need to know your geometry okay and you need to know what regions can be you can sweep okay so that's the only restriction that you're going to have there so at this point uh it's the conversion it's almost done the conversion to fluent format so see that now you have the new mesh here, sys and sh, this size. Okay, so see that now it's larger this size in fluent format. Okay, we're done. So this is the mesh. Remember that as you click here, properties, you will see flu. So this one here, wh where you have located. So if you go into case data directory, you will see that these files are located. There, so let me go there to show you. So I'm saving everything here. DP0 and see that you have sys. Now it should be uh, pa, 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 pa. okay. I, I need to launch fluent. So you're going to see here flu flu dash one. Okay, in those directories where you you you, you are going to have the the geometry. Okay, so that's all for this video. The next one we're going to move with the full instructor mesh. So see you next time. Bye.